The very first phase that we started in 1988 was essentially a cross-sectional study where we looked at um, centenarians who we called expert survivors because they obviously did something and knew something uh, that other people perhaps did not know. At the same time, we wanted to focus primarily on those centenarians who uh, continue to live in the community. So we excluded everybody who would live in uh, long-term care settings in nursing homes so as not to confound our first round of results. So it was important for us to focus really on the best of the best. Well, I keep up with, with what's important to the general public. If we could find centenarians who uh, would live to 100, 102, 103, still live in their own home, be cognitively functioning, if there are such centenarians, and we found a good number of them, then this would mean that other people could too, that this would be the goal for uh, people as they would get older to experience not only a high age but also high quality of life. We had uh, some information about uh, centenarians' uh, health condition from other studies, but very little information about psychosocial functioning. Uh, we see uh, tremendous declines in functional health among centenarians. Uh, the ability to uh, take care of certain household tasks or even just the ability to walk. So if I see a cross-sectional difference, somebody who is 100 compared to somebody who is 80 or 60, then there is certainly a possibility that that difference is also due to some aging decline. So what you are left with is basically alternative explanations that you have when you look at centenarians and compare them to younger age groups, where you can say, well, maybe it is because something does decline from 80 to 100. It is a possibility. But you also have to allow for um, generational or cohort differences, that the differences are more explained by what these people have experienced in their lives. And then there are some aspects uh, of development which are likely to decline uh, and if they do decline, you should see them in cross-sectional studies. If it's only one group, it's hard to say whether they are really different from other groups. So it is a very efficient first cut that you make in looking at uh, uh, different age groups and comparing one group that has made it to a group that in all likelihood will not make it to 100. Toothbrush.